Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. So we can start our session. Uh, so um, probably, if I'm not wrong, you know, the last week uh, we had been talking about some superposition theorem, right? So <clears throat> after superposition theorem, there are you know other th theorems that you all are actually familiar with. We call we call this actually Thevenin and Norton theorems. To be honest, you know, these two theorems are e equivalent. Just all we have to do is to do you know some source transformation later on we will actually discuss it in, in detail. So what does actually Thevenin or Norton theorems actually state? So it says the n two terminal device, but it has to be linear device means there should it consists of resistor, inductor, and capacitor only. So then that AC network or the DC network can be replaced with the equivalent circuit that contain only a single source and a single impedance. This is like something, if I have multiple currencies, multiple nodes, let's say five Taka nodes, 10 Taka nodes, 20 Taka nodes, and 50 Taka nodes. And if I combine all of this, then I can actually replace all nodes with a single node. So let's say we are calculating how much money do I have, and you got 500 Taka. So instead of having that small nodes, you can get a single equivalent nodes that is in you know, the 500 Taka. Similarly, you know, for the voltage source. So here it says that there is a black box. Let's say there is a black box. We don't know, you know, what are inside here, what are inside here. It may contain actually hundreds of actual voltage source or hundred or two hundreds of, you know, the uh, current source or in you know, a resistor or inductor or capacitors, then in that case, we can replace, you know, that the whole black box, whole black box into a circuit. It contains a voltage source along with a series resistance that would be called, you know, the Thevenin actually equivalent to the circuit between these two nodes because here things are not changing. So why does actually Thevenin equivalent circuit is important? Let's say we want to change, you know, this, uh, we want to connect a uh, voltage source, sorry, a load here. Let me actually draw a load here. Excuse me for my handwriting once again. So some load here, but that load is variable. That load is variable. That sign represents is a variable. Let's say we, we want to test the mobile phone. This is a mobile phone testing actually unit. This part doesn't change. Here, we'll change our mobile phone. Let's say we will use Nokia 11 uh, 0 or Nokia you know, 6300, then the Sony or many other phones. So for this case, if I want to calculate any quantity related to these two nodes, let's say how much current is passing through that you know, mobile phone or you know, something, then every time I need to solve the whole equation. That is, you know, super tiring and it takes long, long time because this part is not changing. Although since we are changing this part, if I want to solve, then I need to apply the KVL or KCL uh, for the whole circuit. But that takes a long time. So in order to resolve that issue, what we can do, the, the fixed part that doesn't change, like this is the two terminal, you know, that uh, black box, that can be actually replaced with a single voltage source and then a single actually impedance. How to get this impedance and what are this called? We'll actually discuss in details after in a few seconds. But now, right now, if I calculate the same impedance, same load, that different mobile phone, we can easily calculate the quantity. You know, so whatever, whatever current is passing through this, it can be calculated using this simple that equations. This is a single series actually circuit, so we can easily calculate in the current. So characterization of these loads in real life, these are some device. It could be you know laptop, it could be you know mobile phone, it could be some sort of you know sensor, it could be even you know the freeze television or something, any sensor as as well. So for that case, the whole thing is replaced by a single voltage source with along with a uh, like. Uh, the series impedance. Now that voltage source will be called as the Thevenin voltage and that uh, resistance uh, in the DC circuit is called the Thevenin resistance, but for the AC circuit, we'll be calling it as Thevenin impedance. 
Now, in, in, interesting cases, how to characterize or how to get these values. Although we have learned this thing in DC circuit, we'll be actually uh, revising oh, this thing in AC circuit as well. But before that, there is another theorem, it's called Norton theorem. So Norton says, oh, instead of voltage source, we can replace the whole black box with a current source along, along with a, a parallel actually uh, impedance that is called you know the uh, Norton theorem or the Norton equivalent circuit between A and B. Similarly, we can calculate you know, what is the current or what is the passing uh, the voltage across the load. So we can change that load, but we need to solve a very simple actually uh, circuit. Now we never need to know the both theorem at the same times because this is nothing but the source transformation. So if you remember, you know the source transformation theorem that we had learned. Uh, before, the source transformation theorem states that if I have a voltage source, if I have a voltage source along with a series actually impedance, then that can be converted into a current source along with a parallel actually impedance. So this is nothing but the source transformation. I don't know how to write source. Source transformation. This is nothing but the source transformation. I can't write. So T R A N S. So this is nothing but the source transformation. That voltage source and the and that actually uh, impedance in series can be converted into a current source. So since this is a positive terminal, negative terminal, so current will be flowing in this direction. In this direction. So in source, current will start from the positive terminal to negative terminal. So current will flow like this. So what would be the direction inside the voltage source? It would be from negative to positive in a loop. So the current direction would be in upward direction. It is this is really important. Okay. And that not on voltage, sorry, not on impedance, that not on impedance is equal to the Thevenin impedance. So that two impedance doesn't change. The only thing changes is this voltage value. Uh, voltage source will be converted into you know, the current source. But the relation is very simple. Current equal to voltage divided by impedance. So this is nothing but the that Thevenin voltage, that Thevenin voltage divided by the Thevenin impedance, Thevenin impedance. So this is divided by Z Thevenin, Z Thevenin. So this current value is nothing but the, you know, the, uh, this voltage source divided by this, uh, that impedance. And that not only actually impedance is equal to that Thevenin impedance. Uh, I have a question. Have I uploaded, you know, the la last class, you know, uh, lecture? Probably not right. Did I forget? Sir, I actually attend the uh, live classes, so I don't, I haven't checked it. Yeah, I will, I will check. I will check. Probably I haven't actually uploaded. I will check. So. So, but the question is, how to actually calculate this, um, this actually Thevenin voltage or Thevenin resistance uh, in reality as well as in, in theory. So, there are two ways. There are two ways. As I said, you know, that Z Thevenin is equal to uh, Z Norton means that both cases, you know, the, the equivalent impedance will be same since the voltage and current can be actually voltage source can be converted into current source using source transformation or vice versa. The relation is like this. The Norton current is equal to the Thevenin voltage divided by Thevenin actually impedance. So this is the very basic actually uh, formula. Uh, in this circuit, we have learned this Thevenin resistance is equal to actually Norton resistance and the Thevenin current, sorry, mm, the Norton current is equal to the Thevenin voltage divided by um, the Thevenin actual resistance. So that is nothing but the source conversion, nothing else. Now, in in reality or in practical circuit, how will we calculate that Thevenin voltage? Thevenin voltage is very simple. So what we'll do 
we left this two nodes open, means this is not connected to anywhere, means no load is attached here. And in this case, we'll use multimeter to just measure, you know, what is the voltage value here. So unlike, you know, solving 100 equation in theory, so all we have to do is to just plug to a multimeter here to port up a multimeter and you will get, you know, some value. That is called open circuit voltage, means Whenever these two terminals are open, means no load is connected, nothing is connected, no mobile phone is connected, no batteries are connected or anything is connected. At that case, whatever the you know, voltage you will get here, that would be called as actually uh, open circuit voltage or the Thevenin voltage. And whenever I like make it short, means let's say I connect these two nodes only, uh, then like I just make it short now whatever the current actually passing through this current passing through this that would be called as norton current so that is called i norton or means that i will actually make it short and then i'll put a multimeter sorry a emitter because we want to actually measure current so for the thevenin actually equivalent circuit if i kept it open that open circuit voltage, because in open circuit there is no carbon, so we cannot measure carbon. So all we have to do is to uh, calculate actual voltage that is called open circuit voltage, and that is equal to the Thevenin voltage. Similarly, you know, for the uh, current, if I make it short, there will be no voltage drop because these two nodes will be the same, but there will be some actual current passing through actually these two terminals, and that would be called actually not on current or the short circuit current. And from that actually case. We know the open circuit voltage, we know the short circuit current. If I take the ratio of voltage divided by current, then we'll get that impedance. And that impedance is nothing but this Thevenin impedance. And that should be also the Norton impedance because these two impedances are equal. Uh, in laboratory, we do this actually method, but in theory, we used to do uh, a different actually method or analog analogy. Let's see you know, how to do that. So as I said, you know, the determining actually Thevenin voltage, all you have to do is to just uh, keep these two nodes open. And if I connect the actual voltmeter, we'll get some voltage value and that voltage value would be actually equal to, you know, Thevenin voltage. So similarly, in theory, uh, that terminal, that circuit will be given, let's say, you know, two voltage sources are there, two impedances are there. We'll solve, you know, some math. Whatever, you know, voltage will get, you know, between these two nodes will be called as the Thevenin voltage because these two terminals are marked as the load side means load will be connected here. And this is the black box. It could be anything. So this one is a very, actually a very definition of uh, Thevenin voltage. And then let's see what So similarly, you know, not on current, as I said, you know, uh, this is nothing but the short circuit current. So if I connect, you know, this two terminal with a simple aware without any resistance, so it will be mm, treated as a short circuit. So we'll actually calculate nothing but the current, you know, passing through this. So that current would be you know, called as the short circuit current. So this is one of the case. Let's see. And the Thevenin impedance is nothing but the ratio of actually uh, that Thevenin voltage divided by, you know, Norton current. So the open circuit voltage divided by short circuit current. So the definition suggests this is nothing but the uh, Thevenin voltage means the open circuit voltage divided by short circuit current. But in reality, like in theory, in theory we can also calculate actually this uh, quantities like Z Thevenin or E, e Thevenin, uh, like short circuit current or the open circuit voltage in another way. So what is that way? This is nothing. Whenever we, we have only independent source, means the sources, voltage source or current source, doesn't actually depend on uh, other sources. So generally, these are called you know, independent sources. So in that case, we'll deactivate all actually independent sources. By how? If I have actually voltage source, then we'll actually make it short. If I have current source, I will actually left it open. So this is called, you know, uh, like deactivating actually the voltage sources as well as actually current sources. So we have discussed it um, last week actually, pr probably. So if that is the case, whatever the actually total impedance means, the equivalent impedance, we have learned how to get equivalent impedance between actually two nodes. So that between 
that two nodes, whatever the actually impedances will get, the equivalent impedances will get, will be called as uh, the Thevenin equivalent uh, impedance or the Norton equivalent resonance because both are both will be actually equal. So, uh, yeah, I've, whatever I have said, you know, it's written here, so you can actually check whenever I will actually upload this thing. So, um, what we can do, we can solve the math, like, and then we can discuss how to actually get this thing. So, you see, I have a circuit. The circuit is given. The circuit is given, so I'm asked to calculate the Thevenin and equivalent, uh, not an actual equivalent circuit. So you don't need to solve it in a twice. So either you'll f find out actually the Thevenin equivalent circuit, then you'll use the source transformation to uh, show the equivalent not on circuit, or the vice versa. You'll actually go for the not on circuit first, then uh, you'll use actually the source transformation to get the Thevenin circuit. So uh, yeah. here is a very simple actually example. So in that example, two points are marked. These two points called the reference point. Means reference means these two points where you know the load will be connected. So now I can consider this side as load, means the right side as the load, or the left side as load. How do I know? You know, which side is not. So generally, you know, this sort of arrow signs are given. So whenever arrow signs given on the left side means the left side is the black box. So what does it mean? Let's draw something. So this is the, sorry, this is the black box. So this is the black box and this is the load. So although in the right side, you know, there are actually a few uh, resistance as well as actually voltage source, there's a nothing but the load means a mobile phone is connected. Let's say Nokia phone is connected. So whenever I will connect a Sony phone, we, we will see, you know, this voltage value will be different or the resistance for the solid phone would be different. So this is our case, but which is not changing is this black box. So my target is to reduce, you know, the complexity of solving actually such a uh, circuit. So how would we do so? We can convert the whole black box into a single voltage source with a single uh, impedance in series or for the uh, Thevenin circuit or a single current source with a the same uh, impedance, but in parallel for the Norton circuit. So this is our target. So if this one is our target, how do we solve this? The first, we'll see, can we convert everything in terms into actually impedance or not? So probably we can do like this, sorry. So th this resistance and that inductance will be converted as a single impedance, let's say Z1. Similarly, R2 and Xc can be converted, uh, con uh, like treated as a series circuit. So we can calculate what is the total impedance here. Similarly, you know, that X, can we actually do this one? Can anybody tell me? Can I actually combine these two? No, sir. Because this is on the other side, right? Uh, the, the black box contains only, you know, whatever is there, or whatever are there in the left side of that AB actually terminal. So we cannot consider anything on the right side. So how do we do so? That idea is very simple. Since the arrow size is pointing actually in the left direction, whatever in the right direction will be, will be treated as actually load. So load means we'll actually left it open, will not actually get anything. If I go for actually Thevenin circuit, because the Thevenin circuit says we'll get open circuit voltage. Thevenin circuit means that we need the voltage and you know the um, like equivalent actually impedance or the Thevenin actually impedance. But if we go for actually not on circuit first, then we'll replace this one by a current source. Uh, sorry, make it short, and we will ca calculate that actually short circuit current. So just stick to you know the Thevenin circuit first and then we'll always actually use the source transformation to get actually the equivalent Norton circuit so if I go for the Thevenin circuit all we have to do whatever are there uh, in the right side of AB actually nodes then we'll actually left it open the, it has no value so if I do so check it out what would be the equivalent circuit it's so simple that R1 and XL1 will be actually treated as a single impedance that is let's say Z1 Similarly, R2 and Xc will be treated as a single actually impedance less than Z2. And similarly, Xl2 would be treated as a, you know, a single actually impedance that is actually Z3. So what would be Z1? 
Z1 is nothing but ZR1 plus ZL1. So I will add up this two. So I will get 6 plus 8Z here. I will get here 3 minus 4Z because XC means you know the uh, reactance of actual capacitor that has a negative value here. And XL2 is nothing, 0 plus in you know, a 5J or only in you know, a 5J, positive in you know, a 5J. So we have written these values. We can convert it into uh, polar form. So these are the easiest thing to do. I suggest, I always you know, recommend actually um, to convert everything into polar format. So if this one is the case, and whatever R in the right side we have already neglected. So whatever R in the right side of these two actually terminal A and B, are neglected because the, you know, this arrow sign is pointing in the uh, left direction. That that means you know the left direction is the black box. If this one is the case, tell me, this Z3 does it have any actually impact? Hello. Will there be any current flow through in you know, the Z3 because Z3 is not? No sir, because it's open actually. No, it will go through okay. Z2. Perfect, perfect, perfect thing. So. If this one is not there, so actually this A nodes is nothing but this node, right? Do you understand? Yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because this is also A node because it has no actually contribution. It has no actually contribution. So if it has no contribution, what does it mean? So it means this, my target is to calculate what is the voltage across you know, A and B nodes whenever we consider actually open circuit. That's why you know, this is called open circuit voltage. So how do you calculate? So it's a simple circuit. We can calculate in many ways. We can apply in a voltage division rule. We can apply a uh, loop analysis, or we can use even a normal actually um, that uh, Ohm's law. So if I do so, we can easily calculate actually that impedance. Uh, how do you do so? Here we have applied actually, um, what is it called? Like uh, the voltage division rule. So we are trying to actually get the voltage across Z2. So we'll be writing Z2 divided by whatever the total impedance is here. So that is nothing but the uh, Z1 plus Z2 times you know, the source voltage. So we'll get that value. And that would be called the e thevenin or the thevenin voltage. Now my target is to get the thevenin impedance. How do you get that thevenin impedance? This is very simple. In order to get in you know, the impedance, just recall how to get the equivalent resistance in uh, EEE 101, probably in course. So whenever we try to get the equivalent resistance, there were, there were no sources present, right? Means there were no voltage source or current source. So similarly, we'll use, this, use the same actually method uh, in order to uh, approximate what would be the uh, thevenin actually impedance here? So my target is to check inside black box, only inside black box, not outside black box. Means this arrow sign is the important. So in the left direction, whatever are there, we'll check how many voltage sources and current sources are there. If we have voltage sources, we'll replace that voltage source with a zero volt, means a short circuit. And if we have a current source, then we'll left it open so that you know the current would be zero. So we'll be deactivating all the voltage and current sources, all. So if this one is the case, what would be the circuit after deactivating in E1? This place would be nothing but a short circuit, right? It's a single line. And this one would be Z1, this one would be Z2, and this one would be Z3. Now, come down, and I write down this, and this is the voltage source which is replaced by a short circuit. Do you understand this part? Hello? Yes, sir. Is it clear? Um, if this is clear. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Clear, it is clear. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you so much. If this this is clear, now can anybody tell me, does this Z3 has impact or not? I want to actually no, sir. have a very clear uh, concept. No? Yes, How sir, about the other it, student? It, it, Look, whoever is saying no, uh, let me clear you know, the issue. If I'm talking about what is the current passing through that or what is the voltage across that, there's a, there's a zero, means it has no impact here. Means the Z3 has no impact for voltage or current. But if I talk about you know, impedance, the total impedance, just think about it, this is a uh, circuit you are asked to calculate what is the equivalent uh, resistance between these two points. Do you actually remove this point? No. 
for the impedance you have to actually you have to consider you know this part as well but what you cannot change is to these two points because these are the reference points i am uh, i'm uh, willing to calculate the uh, impedance between so my target is to check from here so z1 and z2 these two are in parallel and then if they are in parallel so uh, the z1 and z2 will be converted into a single actual impedance that is given by z1 parallel z2 and then with z3 what is the combination this two will be in series right do you understand this part or i need to draw another circuit hello what do you think so z z1 and z in parallel and z3 is in series with that yes yeah, z1 and z2 are in parallel maybe i can redraw this one so if i consider this two sorry my laptop is really gone bad so if i have this two this two are in parallel right do you have any confusion with that no sir if can i redraw the circuit like this this is that parallel things z1 and z2 and i have another thing is called z3 this is here sorry this is here and from there is a not and from there this is the b not so this is nothing but the a this is nothing but the b if this one is the case what is the impedance if i'm look from here this parallel combination means z1 parallel z2 plus you know this one is z3 any confusion here hello no sir probably not we know the value of you know z1 when you value the z2 and z3 we'll just you know plug this value here so you can use actually polar format directly that is easier even easier and you will get you know some value so that is nothing but the z tabnin that is the z tabnin so once you get to know the tabnin sorry Thevenin voltage means the open circuit voltage or short circuit current and the Thevenin actually impedance all are it means you can actually characterize everything. You don't need to calculate the Norton circuit anymore because you already know the Thevenin voltage and that Thevenin impedance. So we'll redraw, we'll redraw the Thevenin equivalent circuit. So the whole actually black box things will be converted into a single voltage source which will be called as Thevenin voltage. and we have calculated how to get the thevenin voltage and this is the z thevenin right now we had calculated now if i actually if if we want to convert you know the thevenin equivalent circuit into a norton equivalent circuit this is nothing but that we need to actually apply a source transformation means this voltage source will be actually converted into a current source so current source direction would be in the upper direction because the positive sign on the top and the current value would be nothing this voltage divided by this current sorry this impedance so e thevenin divided by z thevenin will give us you know the i norton and the z norton is nothing but the equal to you know z z thevenin so whatever z thevenin value are here we'll put in you know, the z thevenin here and that norton current is nothing but the ratio of you know the voltage uh, open circuit voltage divided by thevenin actually impedance so is it clear Yes. Sir. Yes. Uh, if this is the case, we'll actually uh, stop here, and uh, we'll, inshallah, in the next actually class, there's I will. There's a to... there's a very basic question. Uh, yeah, very, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ask, please. Very nice to ask. No problem. Uh, yeah, this is your you know chance. I'm uh, here to uh, answer. Uh, why do you do we uh, open circuit uh, current source and? शर्ट <laughs> deactivate actually a cancer so we left it actually open but why is it so why uh, i want doing actually in the opposite uh, thing so the answer is very simple uh, look i'm not sure can i draw or not so just think about a voltage source actually we should have a very clear conception about this basic things otherwise you will never learn so 
we draw in some voltage source like this, right? Let's say that voltage is nothing but the five volt. The voltage is nothing but the five volt. Writing five is not that easy. And this point is called A. And this point is called B. So what do you mean by this? What do you mean by voltage source or voltage between A and B node is 5 volt? What do we mean by this? That means that voltage difference between A node and B nodes is 5 volt. Is it true? Yes, sir. Yes. What does it mean? Do you know this is 0 or this is 0 and this is 5? Yeah, this is possibility because 5 minus 5 minus 0 equal to 5. It could be that B node voltage could be 200 volt. If this is 200 volt, the voltage at A node is 205 volt. So the difference is 5 volt. Do you agree with my statement? Yes, sir. Anybody has any issue with that? Probably not. If this is the case, now yes. I want to actually make it zero. So uh, when I say I want to deactivate actually this voltage source, so what is the value? Deactivate means you know, zero, right? I'm removing that. So in the right now, if I write down actually V equal to zero, what does it mean? The voltage at A and voltage at B should be equal, right? So VA minus VB equal to zero. When VA minus VB equal to zero, when VA equal to VB, right? Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, perfect. So when VA, A and B nodes are equal. But sir, I had actually a question like I don't like to add to that, but just doesn't a wire have an internal? Perfect question. Yeah, I will answer that question. Thank you so much. It's a practical question. Yeah. Now, let's say I replace it with a single line, single wire, means there is nothing. So this voltage is called zero volt. Why? Because, because this is a zero volt. Because whatever voltage value at A node, the, uh, the node B will actually have the same actual voltage value. So there is no change. VA minus BV equal to zero. Do you understand? So this is the this is the reason we left it actually uh, short. Uh, we, we make it short, you know, in order to deactivate, you know, the voltage source. Now, somebody says a question which is valid and that is correct. So let's say we are remove this one in laboratory and we are taking a another extra wire and that wire is connected between this node and this node. So in in theory, these two nodes are um, are actually grounded, but or, or these two nodes are the same means it's a it's a short circuit between these two nodes but all the wires contains you know some sort of internal resistance so basically in real life this is not a perfect short circuit it contains a internal resistance maybe it's a very small resistance 0 0.001 ohm or milli ohm or something so these are the real loss that's why in circuit whatever whatever calculation we perform in actually theory or even in simulation in real life we don't get you know the similar results because it contains loss this internal resistance contains some loss the power loss or energy loss that's why there will be some heating on you know the somewhere or something like this do you get my you know uh, idea in real life, you know, yes, there, is a, there is, a, you know, a finite voltage drop. So if you measure the voltage between these two and this, this node and this node, in theory, you're supposed to get zero volt, but maybe in practical, you'll get a very small voltage, like 0 0.0001 volt or 0 0.01 millivolt or something like this. So that's why a voltage source is, uh, whenever we are de deactivating a voltage source, we replace it with a short circuit. Now, the question is counter question. Why don't we use a open circuit for deactivating uh, a voltage source? Let's give it a try. Let's because voltage it. would be voltage would be like infinitely. Yes. Let's say I wanna say I wanna actually deactivate this voltage source with a uh, with a what is it called mm -hmm. with a open circuit. Open circuit. So can you tell me in open circuit what is the resistance value? Uh, infinite, infinite. Right? resistance infinite. is infinite so that oh. means v by v by i is equal to r that means one by infinite yes. equal to zero something like that. yes so if that input uh, if that inner resistance is infinity that means current is equal to zero because v equal to what is that formula 
i equal to what v equal to i r i equal to v by r v divided by v divided by r right so now in set of actually the uh, what is it called uh, that open circuit uh, actually scenario the resistance is infinity because there is no nothing connected in, in between so if resistance is infinity what is the current value i equal to 0 so that's why we deactivate a current source by replacing an open circuit now how about you know this case what is the formula v equal to what what is the formula v equal to ir right so if v equal to ir what is the resistance or impedance of a short circuit zero so if r equal to zero then what is the voltage value what is the zero. voltage value now do you understand why uh, we are deactivating a voltage source by short circuit because voltage will be zero only when in resistance equal to zero and we are deactivating a current source means i i want to get a zero current by making that resistance infinity and how would we do so by replacing uh, that two not with a open circuit do you understand now yes sir thank you is it clear now okay yes sir. thank you so yes. much uh, i'm sorry uh, we'll actually end our session here Inshallah, from the next class, probably I will be in my own home. So we'll have you our full class. And I'm a Jana Huilona, J. Apprender Judy simulation, Athabache, Apnerable, not MCQ the problem chilo ito. When a left sheet by a question chilo, quite a question chilo. Sir, Bunina Yerukum around. Sir, MCQ actually actually is. Take a Sammy, I'm a Buddhist. Shasta to her hobby. Kotogulo? After the total of 20 questions, I mean, Jetta Bully. Okay, I will stop my recording here. Should not be there. Mm.